Though I knew the biblical phrase, time, times, and half a time, I had only looked into it long enough to leave thoroughly confused. In response to my lesson on Daniel's 70-week prophecy, another fellow student of the word wrote in the following. How do you explain the utilization of time, times, and half a time, three and a half years, by Daniel, James, and John the Revelator? Revelation was written after the literal 70 weeks, yet the author makes mention of that period, three and a half years, as either happening or will happen. Is it allegorical or literal? Is it the latter part of the 70 weeks or a separate prophecy? By Sandy's questions, I realized that folks may have been taught that there was a connection between Daniel's 70 weeks, specifically the midst of the week in verse 27. If you want to skip the rest of this lesson, I'll simply tell you right now. I've studied it out and I can safely say that while there's no direct connection between Daniel's 70 weeks and the three time, times, and half a times we find in the word, there is overlap. If you want to learn more about what time, times, and half a time really means, stay tuned. Now, though I found no time, times, and half a time references in James, I found two in Daniel and one in the book of Revelation. Before we get into those, let me say this will not be a complete teaching. I just want to take some quick glances at these three time, times, and half a time passages to explain the expression and the moments in biblical history these references highlight. Daniel 7, 25. In our first example, Daniel 7, 25 speaks to a king that rises up out of the fourth beast. Beasts equaling violent base kingdoms in the prophetic, which we know in this case refers to the Roman Empire, preceded by the three other beasts, which we know to be Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. Of this king it said, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. He shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time, or half a time. This passage recapitulates verses 20 through 21. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the others which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Most scholars recognize this figure to be the Roman Caesar Nero. Three Caesars, Tiberius, Caligula, and Claudius, were assassinated to clear the way and allow Nero to take the throne. Though there's no timestamp in this particular prophecy, we know Nero's persecution of the saints, Christianity, lasted over three years, from 64 AD until the time of his death in 68 AD, which aligns with this heavenly time, times, and half a time. Daniel 12, 7. The next entry we see for time, times, and half a time comes to us through Daniel 12, 7. The man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be for a time, times, and half a time, when the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. Certainly the shattering of the power of the holy people, Israel, happened under Vespasian in 70 AD, but in order to get there, we have to wade through some troublesome resurrection language in Daniel 12, 1 through 4, and that will be a different lesson. Well, Daniel is in the same position we find ourselves in when in verse 8, he says, I heard, but I did not understand. Totally, brother. Thankfully, the angel dials in a time frame for us in verse 11. 
And from the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that makes desolate is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and arrives at the 1,335 days. Well, the 1,290 days is exactly three and a half years plus one 30-day month. Then there is the blessed are those who make it the 45 days beyond that encouragement. This is one of those passages that gives us the, the idea that time times and half a time equates to about three and a half years. Now, I say about, and I'll share in a moment why I think that this expression is a heavenly approximation. Still, heaven seems to have the exact time, but why they don't lead with that, I don't know. We find heaven conducting many of their prophetic downloads through poetry, which our literal earthbound minds struggle to grasp. As for the abomination that makes desolate being set up, after an odd false start by the Roman general Cestus Gallus, Rome's war against the Jews began in the spring of 67 AD when Titus Vespasian, the eldest son of then Caesar Vespasian, invaded northern Judea. The approaching war sparked the pharisaical religious group known as the Zealots, who had already been plaguing Jerusalem through a rash of political assassinations, kidnappings, and blackmail, to barricade themselves in the temple, thereby ceasing the regular burnt offering. In what became known as the Zealot Temple Siege, the city turned on them. With the help of the Idumeans, the siege was ended to the Zealots' favor and by the winter of 67 AD, Jerusalem was in full control of the Zealots. By 70 AD, the Roman army, the abomination as explained by Luke 21:20, reached Jerusalem and began, set up, their siege. Revelation 12, 14. Finally, we have our last reference to time, times, and half a time in Revelation 12, 14. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness, where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. This verse portrays the local Judeo-Christian church, faithful Israel, who fled from Jerusalem to Pella, east of the Jordan River, to wait out the end of the Jewish-Roman War. But what time frame? After the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, there was another three years where the Roman armies continued to hunt the Jewish people, especially any heirs to the Davidic bloodline, in an effort to crush any remaining hopes of a future messianic rebellion. The Jewish cities of Herodium, Machaerus, and the Table Plateau fortress of Meseda all fell during these next three years. Maybe this was the time then. Nope. Verse 15 corrected me. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. This brings us back to the flood imagery we see in Daniel's 70 weeks. So we recognize that this is not a literal flood of water, but the invading Roman army. This invasion in verse 15 comes after the flight into the wilderness in verse 14, however. So this probably isn't the three plus years following 70 AD, but rather the time leading up to 70 AD, just like what we saw in Daniel 12, 7. Here again in Revelation 12, recapitulation brings us additional light. The time, times, and half a time reference, coupled with its image of the woman fleeing into the wilderness, leads us back to the beginning of Revelation 12, where we see this in verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Suffice it to say, 1,260 days is exactly three and a half years. And notice that this comes right after, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Well, who was caught up to God and to his throne? Yeshua Mashiach, the Jewish Messiah known to us as Jesus of Nazareth. It's also interesting to note that Archangel Michael, Israel's heavenly protector, is also referenced here in verse 7, which provides us a double connection back to Daniel 12 from whence we just came, proving that these two passages are connected. These passages are talking about the same time period. 1,290 versus 1,260. The numbers don't match. If you were paying attention, you noticed that the passage in Daniel 12 
counts 1,290 days, while the passage in Revelation 12 counts 1,260 days. Why the difference? First, it's this difference that makes me think that time times and half a time is a heavenly approximation. It's like saying the package will arrive in about a week. We're not saying exactly seven days, we're saying a week-ish. The fact that these two stated time frames are within a month of each other really helps to assure us that we can be safe, relatively safe, in taking for granted that this expression, time times and half a time, counts for an approximate three and a half year time frame. I would still recommend, however, the next time you're visited by angels and they tell you that something's going to happen in time, times, and half a time, get the exact number of days from them. Second, this variance is the reason why I'm not convinced we're talking about the same time period, at least not for the same location. In Daniel 12, we're talking about the time between the burnt offering, the ceasing of the burnt offering, and the approach this, the beginning of the siege by the abomination, the Roman army, between 67 and 70 AD. This prophecy has Jerusalem in view. In Revelation 12, we're talking about the amount of time that the early Judeo-Christian church is told to keep out of sight, keep their heads down, while they hide in the mountain wilderness of Pella. A similar and overlapping time period, but for different locations out of time. So does time times and half a time apply to any of Daniel's 70 weeks? Though the reference does seem to indicate a period of three and a half years, and therefore could absolutely be used by heaven to describe one of the halves of Daniel's final week, it was not, and the three examples I've shown here do not. They do, however, speak to the time of great persecution in Jerusalem up to the fall in 70 AD, and in that way, there is some overlap with Daniel's 70 weeks. As for whether the phrase is literal or allegorical, I would say that time, times, and half a time is a literal, though approximate, time reference. As for when these references were made in relation to the time when the book of Revelation was written, that is a completely different lesson. Many stand on a late date writing for Revelation, somewhere around 95 AD, but up and coming has been a, a mid-60s time frame, and that has been growing more popular over the years. If that earlier date is correct, it helps to explain that tension, that tribulation, and that imminent judgment that weighs so heavily on many of the New Testament authors. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, it is the truth that sets you free.